He's a Muslim, Darren Murphy. Um, I was born Darren Murphy. Um, I say he was born here in Toronto and uh, raised as a Roman Catholic. Um, really kind of an everyday household living in a, a suburb and you know, going to elementary school and high school. Uh, uh, really nothing out of the ordinary, I don't think, uh, in terms of an upgrade, uh, upbringing. We went to church every Sunday. Uh, I was an altar boy for a number of years uh, growing up, and uh, you know, just uh, family had really strong uh, Catholic values and really strong Catholic faith. Uh, my grandparents uh, on my on my father's side would go to church every every day, uh, pray the rosary, and you know, very very staunch uh, Catholic upbringing. Uh, my mom's side was also very strict, but not quite to that extent. Um, really, kind of. Started to part ways uh, with the with the church, getting into uh, the later part of my high school years. Uh, just kind of st started having a lot of questions that weren't getting uh, properly answered, and uh, I just simply kind of started doing my own investigation and my own research. And I kind of came to the conclusion that I don't really know what the truth is. The concept of the Trinity, the divinity of Jesus, um, and just a lot of you know where all the values in the church came from. I think that most of what practicing Christians and Catholics see today is uh, very much man-made doctrine as opposed to uh, d divinely inspired wisdom and uh, divine messaging. Uh, you know, you're not really encouraged to read the Bible or to do anything like that. It's more of, of follow the doctrine of the church, which is which is man-made. Um, you know, I didn't really have an idea about you know the validity of Jesus' message even because it was very hard to determine where the man-made uh, infiltrations came and, and what may have been original, you know, original messages or, or, or teachings. Um, I didn't know, you know, that Jesus was a prophet or a son of God or whatever. I felt that he was like, just like a really influential uh, man that existed in history that, you know, obviously had a profound impact on, uh, you know, b billions of people over, over the next, uh, you know, Millennium, so uh, you know that, that was kind of where, where I left my belief and feeling that you know I'm not going to go to church because the, that the church part of it is what's is what's uh, you know kind of throwing me off here. My uh, my family uh, is very involved in in uh, called Catholic Catholic groups, uh, and so you know we had discussions and just kind of listened to what they had to say and. Um, you know, spoke spoke to some people who were learned, uh, not necessarily priests or, or of, of the priesthood, but uh, you know people who had a, you know vast knowledge who had studied uh, the religion, and uh, I also also like mentioned turned turned to literature. I started reading books about uh, about the Catholic Church and books about uh, about Jesus and the history side of Jesus, as well as uh, you know kind of some of the stuff that had not really been been talked about. Uh, in, in school and in uh, you know in the, in the mass during the sermons, and uh, essentially from that I kind of came to the conclusion again that I you know again don't know the answer but I know what the answer isn't and uh, that was that was really where I, I you know lost my way really at the beginning um, I was encouraged to ask questions he said oh it's it's good to ask questions um, and then as my questions kind of became more I guess unanswerable and more philosophical uh, you know the kind of the tone of that started to change you know at first you're you know cute little kid who's curious about uh, you know uh, your faith and then all of a sudden it starts to become hey, well that's just the way it is you know <laughs> that's it right um, I mean one of the big turnoffs for me um, was uh, around the idea of salvation uh, I, I think that you know, when when you're asking somebody, so does that mean that this this devout Muslim or this devout Jew or this devout Hindu or this devout Buddhist, that you know, is a really good person? I mean, they may be the best person, like you know, next to Mother Teresa and all these other you know Catholic uh, uh, saints. Well, what's going to happen to them? Well, if they don't accept Jesus, they're going to go to hell. And you know, I I couldn't I, I couldn't accept that as being, um, you know, the, the the true message of of God. And that was. 
that was really just a big, a big sticking point for me. Um, um, you know, among the other uh, historical things that we mentioned, uh, you know, the life of Jesus and, and such. So, um, yeah. So I mean, the the questions kind of stopped getting that kind of encouragement and started becoming more of just well, just have faith, just have faith, just have faith. Um, and I guess the kind of the kind of tagline I guess I had for myself was having faith in God is one thing, but what you're talking about is having faith in man, because what you're telling me is a message. It's a it's a creation of man, not a not a belief in God. You know, there's there's two, there's two differences there. I, I always believed in God because it was logical. Um, you know, something always always created from something. Uh, you know, the Earth came from something. You know, even even the Big Bang, even if it started off with the tiniest little atom that just exploded into everything we know as the universe today, that tiny little atom still came from something. It's just, just a matter of, of common sense bringing you to infinity, um, which is the concept of, of God, is God is infinite, so uh, you, know, you don't have to, I think, be a science major to see, see the logic in that. Uh, so it was never a matter of the existence of God, it was, you know, who, who are you? to think that you can tell me this is what God wants, or who are you to tell me that this is how God's going to judge me. Um, you know, it, it was very, what I, I found to be arrogant um, of, uh, of mankind to have, you know, kind of created this, this whole religion. Um, and to be quite honest with you, uh, at that point in my life, I didn't really know a lot about other religions, but I truly felt that, you know, I can apply that same logic to any other faith and say that this faith is, created by, infiltrated by, influenced by man and you know who, who, who are we again to, to say that this is that this is the true faith of God. Um, I actually even made a challenge to my my now wife before she was my wife that um, you know I know you're a very devout Muslim but I don't know anything about your faith but you know let's talk about it one day and I'll, I'll tell you what's wrong with it and uh, <laughs> I was uh, certainly proved wrong. I, I felt that I had I felt that the value in the church was that I had had a good upbringing that instilled good values in me. Um, so I did see benefit in it. Um, I felt that I would want to have my kids go to a Catholic church, or a Catholic school I should say, because they would get those same value and that same quality of upbringing that I got that I didn't feel I would have got had I brought up, been brought up in a public school system or you know outside the teachings of the church. Um, it was just a matter of the necessity of going through the the, the rituals that had been brought into the church that I felt didn't add any value to, to my daily life. Um, so at, at the point of you know being a 17-year-old teenager, I mean, you know everything. So I felt, okay, great, you know, I'm glad I learned all this stuff, morals, values, is, you know, it's awesome. Um, now I could just, you know, I could be my own guide, be my own uh, kind of my own, my own bar. Um, you know, I figured I could draw my own line in the sand, this is what I find acceptable, and anything beyond that, I'm not going to do because you know I have these I have these these values, and uh, you know I I can I can do this on my own. Um, what I didn't really think about was you know that line in the sand, you know how to keep that from getting washed away with the tides and redrawing that line and having it be in the same place every time. Um, over the next ten year period of my life, that line in the sand, if I look back to where it started and you know where it ended up. I mean, it, it is night and day. I mean, I was doing things and, you know, living a lifestyle that I, you know, ten, you know, ten years ago I would have said, oh no, like there's no way I would do that, or there's no way I'd go down that path, or there's no way I'd act in that way, or use this language, or you know, I just, you know, I got completely, completely off the path. Um, and I mean, it was people I surrounded myself with, um, people, you know, that I felt that I wanted to be like, um, you know, just setting the wrong role models. Um, and I don't regret any of that experience because it's given me good life experience. It's given me a taste of, of that lifestyle, um, and it's made me appreciate you now, um, you know, being able to you know have a have a path and have a goal and have a role model, um, role models that are are you know much farther above and beyond what I could ever hope to be. So um, that that's an unwavering unwavering thing. I uh, I mean through through that ten year period of my life, uh, I entered into a. a long-term relationship. Um, I was with someone for over seven years and uh, we owned a house, uh, we had a dog, uh, you know, I was living the, the American dream, I guess you could say. Um, and I was never really convinced that this was the 
the person for me, um, that this was the life that I was supposed to live on this earth. Um, but, you know, didn't really have anything to say that it wasn't either, right? Um, I was, you know, kind of just kind of going through life really day to day, happy one day, not happy another day, um, but just always trying to move forward and look forward. Um, that relationship ended uh, at the beginning of 2012. Um, we went through the kind of stressful process of selling the house, dividing up everything that we had had. Um, and at that point, after just spending seven years of my life um, kind of in a certain mindset, um, I really decided uh, at that point in my life to open up my mind to anything and everything. Um, and initially, I mean, that brought me to uh, a lot of partying and a lot of um, uh, just lax lifestyle, uh, you know, spending quite a bit of money and, you know, just you know, going out for the whole weekend and, you know, being up late at night and, uh, you know, again, not, nothing, that, nothing that I regret, but um, just, you know, definitely not something that I could have sustained long term uh, in my life. And it's almost funny that that same type of mentality of saying I'm going to do anything and try everything um, brought me to learn more about Islam. Um, it kind of started off with just a couple of, say, I can't call them coincidences, but just a few instances um, that, that happened in my life. Um, I said to a friend of mine who was getting married in Pakistan, you know, yeah, I'll go to your wedding in Pakistan. Sure, why not? I mean, a year ago, um, I would have been like, well, world travel, you know, 18-hour flight, uh, you know, just, it's too much for me. Um, but, you know, I said, I'm going to go to Pakistan. Um, this Pakistani uh, co-worker of mine said, let me teach you some Urdu. So I said, yeah, sure, why not? I never would have cared to turn learn Urdu, but I was trying everything. I had an open mind. So I said, yeah, let's learn some Urdu. Um, so, you know, started doing that, just, you know, some downtime at work, and we started talking more. Um, I was going to Ikea one day, coming out of the store, it's a big billboard outside Ikea, it says, uh, read the Quran, it's a giant billboard beside the highway. Um, I kind of laughed at it, and said to my coworker the next day at work, uh, when we were having our little meeting for learning Urdu, I you know, kind of joked around, I said, what, are you guys recruiting or something? Like, you know, what's up with this <laughs> giant billboard outside Ikea? Um, uh, and so it was just, you know, some, some kind of little things like that. Um, and then kind of one day, uh, out of the blue, this, this coworker asked me if I'd ever, you know, been to a protest or a rally. And I said, no, I never had anything that I care enough to, to protest about. You know, um, she says, well, how would you like to attend one on, on Saturday? And I was kind of like, well, you know, what's it, what's it about? Like, what is this, what is this rally? And, uh. She said, well, it's called Al-Quds Day. And uh, so I said, okay, well, what's that, <laughs> you know? Um, and then she asked me if I knew about the Palestine-Israel conflict. And, you know, I said, you know, essentially, you know, I know the basics of it. You know, they took this land and nobody seems to care about, you know, what happens to these people who used to live here. Um, but that was really all I knew about it. So I said, send me some more information and, you know, I'll, uh, you know, I'm open for anything. I'll, I'll come out and check, that, check out this rally. Sure, why not, right? Um, so she sends me this email uh, one day. She's at work. I'm at home. Uh, she sends me this email. Says, "You know, check out this. Check out this video." Um, I, go, I watch this video, and it's a video uh, of Lauren Booth speaking at an Islamic conference. And uh, it's about an hour-long video. I'm watching this whole video. You know, very interesting. I found it very fascinating. But I got to the end of the video, and uh, I was really wondering, like, what, what was this video all about? Why did she send me this video? Because she didn't talk about Al Quds. They not even for a minute. I mean, she talked about going to Palestine and her experience in Palestine, but the main focus of her whole hour-long uh, talk was her journey to Islam, how she came to em embrace Islam. And uh, you know, I joked around with my coworker again, saying, what, "Like, what are you trying to convert me here? Like, you know, I said, let me check out this rally, and you know, what's up with this video, right?" So, I did a little bit of l l reading into it and said, "You know, okay, this is something I think I can at least check out," you know, and. Go in as an impartial observer, see what it's all about, and uh, um, I mean, I think I probably had this kind of image in my mind of uh, you know seeing Muslims on TV at a rally and just kind of the the screaming and the fists in the air and uh, uh, you know the guy with his mouth wide open you know frozen in the front page of the newspaper and uh, uh, when I got there it was it was a completely different scene than what I than what I really expected and uh, I mean they had speakers of all faiths there there was the rabbis speaking. 
and there was uh, Christians uh, speaking and, and then the Muslim scholars. But uh, listening to the speeches, the Muslim scholars, they, they, they kind of touched me in a place uh, within my heart that I, you know, I, I wasn't expecting to, to get there. I was just, you know, some guy going downtown to check out this, uh, this big event. And uh, I was really so inspired that, I mean, by the time they started the march from Queen's Park down to the U.S. consulate, um, I was fully chanting and cheering along with, the, you know, all the Muslim brothers and sisters there about, you know, the, the, the oppression in Palestine and, uh, you know, all of the various things they had. Uh, I, I was really just elated that I didn't expect to feel that way uh, going into this and uh, I went home after the event and just was just on this really what I can only describe as being like a spiritual high. Um, I just was just I had this, this, this awesome feeling. Um, I went home and just kind of spent the, spent the night alone uh, in my apartment and you know drinking and doing the stuff that I would normally do on a Saturday night. Um, when I woke up the next morning and that's really when my life completely changed. Um, I had started to get curious about the Quran and about Islam. I mean, having listened to the Lauren Booth video and I mean, seeing this random billboard and, you know, just sort of piqued my curiosity, but it wasn't anything that I, you know, was, was you know, considering, hey, let me try that out. I mean, I was, I didn't need a religion. I was, you know, I had had it all figured out, right? Ten years of my life, I knew what I was doing. And, uh, when I woke up the next morning, that spiritual high that I felt the next morning, that, the, the last night I should say, sorry, that spiritual high that I felt the, the last night was just completely gone. And I would describe it as having a spiritual hangover. I felt kind of like empty and kind of like, you know, what do I do? Um, I had my normal morning routine, which, you know, wasn't probably the healthiest thing in the world. And I didn't want to go back down that road again. And I just... I found myself looking, looking out the, the balcony, um, looking over the city of Toronto. I'm up on the 24th floor, just looking out, you know, seeing, you know, for, for miles and miles. And I just didn't know what to do. I was not thinking. I was just kind of in a sort of meditative uh, state. And all of a sudden, I had these, these words in my heart that came to me um, that said, submit to God and everything will be okay. And, I mean, it just completely overwhelmed me. Uh, I just felt this joy. Um, I, I just, I've heard poets and you know, writers describe this wave of joy, and I didn't know what that was until that, that exact moment because I was so overcome by this, this joy. It just felt like I was being swept away, and I just cried. Um, I just, I mean, I wasn't sobbing, but just tears were, were just, you know, coming down my face, and I, 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 I just I had this change that, you know, I didn't care for any of the, the drinking or the partying or, you know, any of that other lifestyle. Like, I just realized what was wrong with me, you know? Like, I just, I felt like I had been purified. I felt like I had been spiritually cleansed. I felt like I had been reborn. And on that day, it was the 19th of August last year, it was the Eve al-Fitr, I said to my, my coworker what happened um, and I said, you know, what do I do? I don't want to lose this feeling. And, and she said, well, what do you think you should do? And I said, well, I need to embrace a new lifestyle before I slip back and, and go back to my old ways. Um, and she said, well, then Darren, I openly invite you to learn Islam and embrace it. And really what I can say is, is I, I did. Um, I just started learning it and it just felt right. Although I had this, this this amazing feeling, I didn't I didn't know what to do. You know, I wasn't all of a sudden like submit to God. Oh, okay, I know how to do that. Um, and that was that was where reading uh, about Islam came in, um, and you know, learning how to submit to God, learning how to live your life in a way that would be pleasing to God and uh, also rewarding to you. Um, the whole experience to coming uh, of coming the whole experience of coming to Islam for me. Uh, was very much uh, an emotional experience, um, an emotion in regards to my relationship with God. Um, I didn't look at it from an intellectual standpoint or from a historical standpoint and say, well, you know, Islam's got more historical credibility than any of the other faiths and, you know, it, because that, that's irrelevant. Um, you know, I think that, you know, what, fe what feels good, what goes with what you know in your heart to be true is is 
what you is what you need to do, um, and and that's 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 how that's how God that's how Allah Subhanahu wa Taala would give His religion to us. It would it, He would make us feel it. It wouldn't be. I mean, there is an intellectual side to it, of course, but it would be something that you would feel is right. Um, you know, when you read a hadith, when you read an interpretation, when you read, you know, somebody's uh, essay or their paper or their, you listen to somebody's lecture, you know, you don't need to have a historical background. You don't have to have, um, you know, years of studying in Hausa or philosophy training or you just, it feels right. If it feels true, if it feels right, then, then go with it. Um, and, and everything that I read about Islam felt right. Um, any of the concerns that I had had uh, previously with other faiths, uh, specifically Christianity, in terms of you know the, the human infiltration into it, um, I didn't have here because it all felt true, and that was that was what what, what brought me there. It was a intellectual looking, but the emotional validation is is what is what really brought me to Islam. Um, I spent every waking moment that I that I could reading um, different articles, uh, reading different papers, reading books, um, just reading everything that I could about Islam um, and finding out there's different sects of Islam and different schools of thought and you know within each sect there's different ways of looking at things and these are the different beliefs of these different uh, these different schools of thought and uh, you know it, it you know could have become a little bit overwhelming had I not had a little bit of guidance in, in saying, okay, you know, try try looking at these resources, try looking at this. If you just Google Islam or Google, you know, something generic like that, I mean, you're going to come up with, uh, you know, a whole wide range of things that you might not necessarily want to read. Uh, so, you know, I, I, alhamdulillah, had a lot of help from my colleague pointing me in the right direction in terms of this, this is what you can read. I was on alislam.org. Um, and they have just a wealth of resources there, which really, which really helped guide me and uh, further further my understanding of it. Uh, there's a, the Revert uh, Revert Islam website that uh, that I went on to, um, and, and essentially after nine days of intensive reading and uh, you know looking at all the different aspects of it, the different beliefs. Um, I, one thing that I remember sticking out for me was uh, uh, the the whole debate between predestination free will and then the combination of, of both of them and you know not a philosophy major but you know I'm a, I like to think of myself as a thinker and uh, you know that's what always had made sense to me you know that, that combination and uh, um, nine days after I had this intensely emotional experience which made me say okay I want to learn about Islam nine days after that I decided that I've learned enough to say that I want to consider myself as a Muslim and I think it was about 3 a.m. in my apartment on a Tuesday night. I, uh, I did my shahada, and the next morning, I you know, woke up for the first time as a Muslim. And I remember that was a that was a that was a very unique feeling. Um, I remember being in the elevator on my way down to the car in the morning to go to work, and I said it out loud for the first time: "I'm a Muslim," and it just. I mean, it felt right, but it just sounded so weird. <laughs> you know, it's nothing that I never ever would have expected. Um, I mean, in a million years, and uh, you know, I mean, any of my friends uh, and family, I mean, they never would have, they never would have thought either. I mean, we're talking about a nine-day period here where you know I was partying and uh, you know calling up my buddies to go out on a on a Friday night to uh, nine days later saying that that's not for me and you know I'm a Muslim now. Um, so. I kind of uh, kind of kept to myself for a little while. Um, I just kept reading. I just kept reading. Kept learning. Um, I was introduced to a very good friend of mine, um, who's now a very good friend of mine. I should say. I was introduced to to him right around this time, uh, and uh, Alhamdulillah, he helped give me a little bit more focus uh, when it came to reading. Because once you get the basics down, you then start to say, okay, what next? And then you have the same problem of there's just so much information out there, so many resources, and uh, you know he used a great analogy. You know you want to go up the ladder one step at a time. You know there's no sense in reaching for the twelfth rung when you're on the the first. So um, you know really appreciative for him to uh, have you know been able to, to give me that guidance and 
and to, to, to help me along with my reading. But uh, that was very important for me to, to gain as much knowledge and understanding, uh, understanding of it as I could. Because although the emotional experience is what connected me to Islam and, and brought me to have a relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, um, when it came time to speak with my parents, when it came time to speak with my friends and my, my relatives, um, I felt that I needed to have something more than, well, it just feels right, you know, like that's not going to satisfy them. And not that I felt that I had to satisfy anybody, but to make sure that it was, um, you know, I was able to communicate, you know, what I felt and, you know, not just this, this crazy thing happened to me that, you know, some people may or may not believe, but that, you know, there's, there's actually wisdom in it. There's, there's, there's more to it than that. And, uh, you know, Islam gave me all the answers that I needed in terms of why things happen, you know, you know, why something is forbidden, why something is permitted, you know, why we do something like this, um, you know, everything that, uh, you know, kind of seems mysterious about it to somebody looking in is insanely logical and just makes, you know, so much sense that, I mean, once, once, you, once you find out the why behind something, you, you really say, okay, yeah, I, why would anybody do this, you know, like, why, like, why aren't all events segregated, why, you know, like, why, why don't you say, you know, don't hug my wife goodbye, don't even shake her hand, you know, I mean, just stuff like that, it just seems like so foreign, so, you know, far out there, but once you start to learn the wisdom behind it, you say, oh, hang on a second, like, I know what they're talking about there, you know, like, I never, you know, I never felt it was, you know, that that was what the, the right thing to do was, you know, I was never the guy that, you know, I wanted to go, you know, hug everybody and, you know, you know, give, give my friend's wife a kiss on the cheek or, you know, all, all that kind of stuff, you know, I just, ne I never felt it was, it was the right thing to do. And, you know, here's this religion telling me that, you know, this is why we don't do this, right? This is why we believe this. This is, this is, this is why we do what we do. Um, respect towards women was a big thing for me that, that uh, drew me to Islam. When, when I started to read about Islam and, and uh, find out more about it and, uh, you know, what all the different, uh, you know, beliefs entail, um, respect towards women was a very big thing that, uh, that appealed to me. I always had that kind of high level respect towards women and, uh, you know, I was never that guy that would try to chat up a girl or, you know, I always felt it was like trying to fool them into liking you and, you know, that was never, <laughs> that was never something that I was interested in doing because I felt that it wasn't giving them the, 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 due, the due respect that they, that they deserve, right? Um, and, you know, that was something that, uh, you know, appealed to me. Uh, I mean, aside from aside from that, and the the discipline that Islam prescribes with the the, the daily prayers, uh, you know, the the diet. Uh, I mean, everything that, that goes into it. It's it's a comprehensive way of life. That when I decided to, to become a Muslim, it wasn't something that I felt I had to change my ways to to all of a sudden be a Muslim to to prescribe to Islam. It was something that I felt I could put on that fit perfectly. That was going to give me a reason to say, no, I don't do that, you know, even though I had always felt that I don't want to do that, you know, you become a victim of society and you say, okay, well, yeah, okay, I'll do that because that's what you do. That's what, that's what a guy does. That's what people do. That's what everybody does. Um, but Islam gave me the, the reason to say no, you know, it, it fit with my viewpoints. It fit with my mentality, it fit, it fit with the way I felt about the world. And, uh, you know, it just, it gave me the gave me the outline to to live the life that I always wanted to live, that I felt that I should live, but that I had no idea how to live it. You know, it was a perfect fit. A, a lot of the stuff uh, I I was able to kind of comprehend uh, on my own. Um, anything that I had questions about, um, you know, I would I would turn to my friend, uh, ask questions. Um, I mean, you know, even even going to uh, the local alum, um, you know, asked a few questions, but that was more uh, more so, I think, in regards to some fiqh questions where you know answers weren't so readily available. Um, I mean, most of the stuff uh, it just makes sense, um, and there was there was things that um, you know just just from reflecting on them, I was able to uh, you know really grasp uh, like the concept of wudu, um, like. Right, almost from the first time I started to do wudu, I really, you know, felt like okay, you know, I'm purifying, you know, my 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 eyes and my my mouth and you know what I'm looking at, what I'm saying, um, and I'm purifying what I'm doing, what I'm reaching for, and what I'm touching, and you know, I'm purifying what I'm thinking and you know where I'm going and you know, like I I kind of had that whole that whole connection 
um, really just from reflecting on it. Um, and then I read the Dava Salat, and you know, Khomeini articulates it so much better than, than I ever could, but you know, the concept was there, right? Um, I, I, and I truly feel, I believe that, you know, because Islam is the completed religion of God, uh, of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that it doesn't take a lot to connect with it because He created us and He created this, this, this religion. I mean, it's, it's supposed to be a fit. It's supposed to be that easy. Um, it's not supposed to be something, I mean, that, that's a challenge. I mean, you know, Islam preaches moderation. You know, it's not something that should have to be so excessive. Um, when you've come so far off the path, and in all fairness, you've come off the path not knowing you're off the path, but when you've come off the path so far, it, it can seem to be extreme to get to that point. But when you're, when you're at that point, it's, it, it's, it's as if you can breathe freely for the first time. Um, I had so many different masks that I wore in my life. Um, I had different groups of friends that, you know, demanded that I act certain ways around different people. Um, you know, there was also work, colleagues, uh, family, certain members of my family that, you know, you kind of had to put on a different facade when you're, when you're around them to make sure that they were as accepting as possible, that they, you know, thought the most of you that you could. Um, and when I came to Islam, all of that disappeared. I was able to be me. I felt like I was a 12-year-old kid again, just innocent. Um, you're just yourself. You know, a 12-year-old kid will just say what they think. They won't think about it. They won't worry about anybody who's around. They just, they're just honest with themselves and they're honest with the people that are around. I felt like that, except that I was a 27-year-old man that had life experience, that had uh, the courage to stand up for what they believe in, the courage to say something in front of people. Um, and you know, just the, the the ability to be intellectual and think about things uh, from an adult standpoint. Um, I mean, I felt more powerful than I ever ever had in my life. You know, combining all of those things. Um, I mean, to be an adult but to have the innocence of youth was just. I mean, it's just an indescribable feeling. And you know, that gives you a reason. That gives you a motivation to avoid. Uh, you know, the social. Uh, Pitfalls, I would say, social pitfalls that, that we, we have in, in life these days. Um, you know, I've you know haven't been back to the, the to the restaurants and the bars, you know, even to go hang out with a friend that is still interested in that thing. You know, the sake you know the the benefit of maintaining certain relationships. You know, all of a sudden, they seem to, they used to be the most important thing in the world to me. You know, now they've been you know cast down two, three, four, five rungs in my in my list of priorities in life. You know, um, I mean, my relationship with God is is number one, you know, first and foremost. And and when you have that, everything else falls into place. It doesn't have to be something that you struggle with. Yeah. The reactions were varied. Um, and looking looking back on it, um, I think that you know, as a whole, um, the the farther away somebody was from me, the less connected they were to me, um, the less they reacted to it. Um, so I mean, my inner circle of friends. Uh, my my family was really at the core of that, and you know my closest friends, and then acquaintances, coworkers, you know, kind of so on and so so forth. Um, the farther they were from me, the the, the less that really impacted them. Um, I think one of the most uh, memorable uh, discussions was with, with my mom, um, which was uh, not too long after after the Mashahada. Uh, she was up at the cottage. I was going up with my brother. We were, we were heading up to go camping, and we stopped at the cottage for the night, uh, kind of like a, a halfway point to get up to where we were going. And um, I, I'd, I'd felt like right from the beginning that you know what I had done. You know, when I did my shahada. This was this. It was for me. Uh, first of all, it was for me. So I mean, I wasn't going around telling people or or you know saying, hey, guess what I did last night, or you know <laughs> you know guess guess what I am now. Um, I just kind of went on with my daily routine and. Um, you know, did it, did it for myself. Um, I wasn't at the same time trying to hide it. Um, if somebody was asking me, you know, what have you been up to or, you know, what you've been doing lately, you know, it would naturally come up in conversation. So, so we, were, we, were, we went up to the cottage. Um, it was my grandfather's cottage um, on my dad's side. Um, pictures of uh, Jesus and Mary and crosses all over the place. And uh, I hadn't seen my mom in, in, a, in a few weeks. Uh, so. I was upstairs. My mom's like, you know, sit down. Let's 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 talk. How you been? What have you been up to? Um, 
And uh, so I told her, look, you know, um, you know, I, I found my soulmate, and uh, I've, you know, come back to God. And she she started to cry. Um, she said, "You're not going to believe this, but I've been praying for that for you like all year." Um, and she was just she was just so happy. And um, <laughs> so I was just kind of sitting there on the bed casually, and uh, she says, "So are you going to start coming back to church?" And I said, "Well, no." And she says. Well, what do you mean, no? I said, well, I haven't gone back to the church. I said, I found God. And she's like, okay, so are you going to go to another church? Or, um, and I said, well, no. I said, Mom, I embrace Islam. And her her ear-to-ear -ear grin immediately left her face. Um, and just like, you see in her eyes, it looked like somebody just punched her right in the stomach. And she just kind of, lost all of that that happiness that uh, that she had at the moment and uh, I think the first thing she said was oh my god Darren have you been brainwashed um, and I kind of laughed and said no and she said but what about 9-11 and I mean just kind of went along that that line and uh, um, I mean, I, I, I truly believe that, that Allah guided this conversation that I had with my mom because uh, I was able to uh, incorporate everything that I had gone through in terms of uh, you know, Islamic knowledge and stuff. I you know, talked about the prophets and about Jesus and you know, about how we, we believe in all this stuff. Um, I think she, she said, well, don't they worship multiple gods? And you know, I said, no, let me, let me explain it to you a little bit more. Um, and as I'm talking to her, as I'm discussing, she kept, shh. Your, your father's going to hear, your father's going to hear. He's, he's downstairs with my grandpa and they're, they're praying the rosary together. Um, so that was, that was it. I ended up talking to my mom for about three hours. We went down to the docks, sat under the stars. Uh, you know, we talked about Islam a little bit. And we just, you know, had general, some general conversation as well. Um, but uh, it, was, uh, it was a really amazing experience because uh, I, got really, I really connected with my mom that night. I mean, we have always had a good relationship, but, uh, you know, when it came to, you know, this, this whole experience, it, it kind of made her a little less ignorant than she was at the beginning of the conversation. Um, and, you know, she said, let's not tell your dad right away. Um, she didn't really sleep much that night. And uh, when I got up for my, my Fajr prayers the next morning, she was kind of like up and, you know, just kind of, kind of worried about me and all this and that. But, uh, uh, we kind of, me and my brother got up, we went on our way and, uh, you know, I, I felt really good about, about the conversation that we'd had because I really had no idea how it was going to go. I was a little bit nervous about how the reaction was, was going to be because it was just one of those things that, uh, a very sensitive, very sensitive subject, uh, especially considering their, their, you know, pride in their, in their faith, right? So, um, that was a, that was a really good conversation. Um. It was that same weekend, uh, I think it was the next day, when I was camping with my brother, we were, we were up, uh, up around the campfire and we were just chatting and I ended up telling him. And, um, he was just like, cool. Um, you know, he didn't really, really have a, a huge reaction. Um, he's not a church goer. Um, uh, he's, just, he's, he's just a really good guy. Um, <laughs> uh, he shared a story with me at that point where you know, he, he tried to go back to church and uh, you know, then he, was, he heard about some of the more bad press of the church in the in the newspaper, and he's just like, okay, I can't. Like, this just doesn't just doesn't work for me. Um, so we just you know we just kind of talked about it a little bit, and you know he kind of learned a little bit about it. And I was actually surprised at how much he he already he already knew. He knew about halal and, and all that kind of stuff. And so it was just a it was just a very general conversation. And I mean, we pretty much carried on with our, our weekend uh, like like we would have any other time. You know, fishing and campfire and eating and all that kind of stuff, um, and, and, that, and that was it. Uh, uh, the next, uh, the next big reaction I would say is, was, was from was from my dad. Um, that was that was definitely a conversation that I was not looking forward to. Uh, again, not knowing, you know, like how am I gonna how am I gonna tell him this, right? Um, at this point now, we're into October, and uh, this this colleague that that had initially brought me to the Al Quds Day uh, rally, um, I was now like basically engaged to um, and uh, we were going to be getting married at the end of October we we're going to have our nikah ceremony done 
So, I mean, it was really at this point like, okay, I, I have to tell him. It's not a matter of, you know, waiting for the right moment. It's creating the right moment. And I remember I went to my parents' house uh, one Sunday evening um, and, you know, told my mom, okay, you know, I'm going gonna, gonna to have the talk with him today. And, uh, you know, we got dinner ready. We ate dinner. And just the right moment never came up. Um, and it was, wasn't something that I wanted to force. And, you know, I just... I ended up going home at like 11, 30, 12 o'clock at night, not having told him. Um, so I went back the next weekend and uh, again, not having any strategy or any, any, any idea of you know, what I was going to do, I uh, we were eating dinner and it was, a, it was about five or six years ago when, when my grandmother, my, my dad's mom, um, was uh, really sick. She, was, she had stomach cancer, she was in a, a long battle with her cancer. and. Uh, so my dad was going over a lot to to spend time with her at the house, and uh, you know my grandfather and my dad's twin brother, they're you know they're praying and they're doing the rosaries and uh, all that kind of stuff. And my dad didn't really know all, about all that kind of stuff. We would go to church on Sunday, but you know how do I pray a rosary, right? You know, it's one of those kind of you know Sunday Catholics, right? Um, so he started to get really into it at that point, and. Uh, so, so what I did was, uh, I mean, it just it just came to me. I mean, I didn't plan this. I mean, Allah gave me this uh, gave me this uh, kind of approach. I just asked him. I said, "Hey, Dad, you know what? You know, I know like a while back when when Grandma was sick, you had a, you had a kind of experience that brought you to to closer to God. Um, you know, can you tell me about that?" And he did. I mean, he, we talked for over an hour um, about God and about what we're here for and. All of this kind of stuff. He talked about his experience, and I mean, he talked about all of that for over an hour before I gave him any information. And you know, I told him that, like, look, you know, I had a, I had a similar experience myself, um, and I went on to share the, you know, the the story of being, uh, you know, in my apartment getting this message, and you know, just coming to God. Um, and then I then I told him I said I started reading this this amazing book that uh, just really touched me like every time I read it it inspired me in so many different ways uh, I said it's brought me to tears like more times than I can count um, and uh, I put out this little notebook that I had where I had uh, some some short uh, surah from the Quran in there um, I had written it down actually when I went camping so I could I could pray at the, at the time I went camping I was like you know less than two weeks. Uh, no, I was about, I was less than a week praying when I went up to the, uh, to the camping trip, and so I was just reading the surahs off of this little notebook that I had. So I started reading these these surah to him, and um, and then I came to the one, uh, you know, to me, my religion, to you, your religion, and my dad says, what what, what book is this? Like, um, and then I reach into my bag and I put out the actual copy of the Quran and I put it on the table and I slid it over to him. And you just see his face thinking and, and kind of going through it because for now, a two-hour conversation that we'd had, um, we've been sharing points. We've been, yeah, no, I, yeah, that, that's, that's how God is. That's, how, that's why we're here. That's what, you know, that's what the message is. That's, you know, it, was all, it was all common ground that we were talking about for a good two hours, um, both, both emotionally and philosophically. And you know, it was just this, this great conversation. And then when he realized that, you know, I'm, you know, <laughs> coming from this, um, he really didn't, he didn't have anything to say. He, he didn't have any counter argument. He didn't, um, I think the only thing he did was he kind of looked at the book. He didn't open it. He just looked at the cover of the book. Um, and then he slid it back to me and he said, this is from the devil and don't read this. This is going to, this is going to take you off the, the, the path that you've been on. I said, this, this is what's kept me on the path that I've been on. And, um, uh, you know, we, you know, basically said, okay, well, you know, to be my religion and to you, your religion. And, uh, there was no anger. Uh, we, we hugged. Um, I mean, it was, I mean, my mom's in the background crying here because she was terrified about how this conversation was going to go. Um, uh, but it was, a, it was an amazing, amazing connect with my dad. Um, you know, he still hasn't accepted it. Um, he didn't come to the Nikah. He didn't come to the, to the, the Ruksati for my wife. Um, you know, cause he feels that that's part of his strong beliefs. He can't endorse um, my conversion, but um, I mean, there is there is no negativity. There is no anger. There is no animosity. There is no 
there was no rejecting of me as his son or, you know, I mean, I was honestly, you know, I thought maybe he's going to say, well, I, okay, I never want to see you again, you know. I had no idea what to expect and, I mean, alhamdulillah, it was just the most amazing, amazing experience that, that Allah guided my two conversations with my parents in, I mean, two completely, just completely separate ways. Um, but they both ended up being, I think, the absolute best approach uh, for, for both of them um, in their own in their own regards. So. That was those 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 are definitely my two my two big conversations uh, with people in Islam. Getting getting involved in the community. Um, I mean, I think that any white guy going to the mosque stands out. Um, a white guy who's more than six and a half feet tall stands out at the grocery store. Um, so you know, I mean, I certainly was the center of uh, a lot of attention. Um, but the, the the people in the community have just been amazing and receptive. I've made so many friends, um, had so many people offer their help and their assistance, their guidance, their advice. I mean everything. I, I've, I've met so many people that it's, uh, that it's quite, a, quite an amazing thing and you know, just uh, alhamdulillah for that. Um, my, my wife's family it was very open, very receptive. Um, you know, there was a little bit, just a very short period of time where there was um, a little bit of um, just getting to know each other a little bit more um, because there's that, that cultural difference and just being able to accept that you know okay you're, my daughter is going to marry somebody outside of the outside of the culture um, which was a little bit of something that I don't think they expected but um, you know they they accepted me essentially right from the beginning which uh, alhamdulillah it was made, made things a lot easier uh, for us uh, I mean the fact that you know I converted in August um, met her parents in September and we got married in October I mean you know, I mean, how could, you, how could you really, you know, ask God for any, any more than that? I mean, that's, yeah, I mean, it's got to be some sort of record or something like that. I've participated in outreach programs uh, that, that, that have been organized uh, through various organizations at the masjid. Um, so, yes, they, they do do it. Um, but no, in the sense that I think that the best way to reach out to people is, is through your clock and, and through the way that you act. Um, I mean, you know, we're not out there, you know, to you know, throw Qurans at people or to tell people to read the Quran, um, you know th those things may intrigue somebody's uh, thoughts. But you know, again, I feel that based on my experience, the the way to get somebody get somebody the way to appeal to somebody is is through their heart, through their emotion. You know, so you know to to tell somebody to you know to read this if they're not ready to read it, it's not going to make any sense to them. It's not going to speak to them. You know, your heart has to be open. You know, before you can before you can have that intellectual connect, and uh, you know, we do what we can. I think um, there's always room for improvement, but you, know, you have to balance that with you know, is the world ready to hear the message, right? So, um, do we do enough? You know, maybe not, but are we doing stuff? Definitely. And you know, are we going to continue to do stuff? Yes. And do I want to be a part of that? You know, inshallah, absolutely. I'd like to like to be as big a part of that as I can because one thing that really hit close to, uh, close to home for me was you know out of the you know huge circle of friends that I built up you know throughout my life um, why me you know why did why did God bring me back to this path why did why did God I felt you know save my soul from you know the life that I was li living um, and I, I really decided well, not necessarily that I decided, but I really came to the, the realization that, you know, he didn't do this just for me. You know, I'm going to be, inshallah, an instrument, you know, that, that, that Allah can use to reach out to other people. You know, um, you know, I think that a lot of people, you know, in my circle, having seen the transformation that I've gone through, you know, have, you know, kind of questioned, like, you know, what's up, right? But then when we, when we talk, and when I ask them at the end of the day, you know, who would you, who would you ask to watch your kids? Old Darren or new Darren? Well, when you put it like that, I'd rather have new Darren watch my kids, right? So I say, well, so isn't that the way that, you know, you would encourage somebody to, to live their life? Isn't that the way that you would want to live their life? And, you know, I, mean, I haven't heard a valid argument against that. You know, so, um, you know, that's, 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 what I, that's what I want to do. I want to be a part of the Dawah. I want to be a part of the outreach. And, uh, you know, I think, you know, being a, I guess I'd say I'm a visible minority in Islam. Um, you know that that could that could be to to my my benefit. Submit to God and everything will be okay. I mean it's where it all began, and I mean that 
that summarizes that summarizes it. You know, um, I mean, I, I've turned to the Quran many times. Uh, you know, to just you know open up a random page and read, and it's it's always made me feel better, right? I mean, there's 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 not one specific thing um, that I, that I, that I turn to, um, but uh, you know, it, the, the book. It's it's really a miracle. I mean, the the miracle is the book. It's just the most amazing thing um, that, that you could ever read, and you know just how it how it speaks to you on so many different levels. Um, I mean, I I was one of the first things I started doing, and, and alhamdulillah, I, I finished reading the Quran in its entirety um, within the first uh, three three months or so, uh, three to four months. I, I read the whole thing from cover to cover just because of how powerful it was when I started off I just open it randomly and read and I mean I can like I'm telling you like every, every day I cried reading that book because it was just so powerful and I said okay I, at some point I said I'm not going to just do this randomly anymore I I want to I want to I want to read it all and it's just you know was was just the, one of the most amazing experiences in my life you know doing my salah you know opening up the Quran you know reading a few pages at a time and just you know having that as a, as a guide in your in your life is is irreplaceable. Um, you know, I, I mentioned before that that line in the sand. You know, I I don't have a line in the sand anymore. I have a, I have a rock. I have an anchor. I have, you know, the the, ro the rope of Allah to hold on to, that is unwavering. That will apply to every situation that you get into, and um, you know, it's just it's just been you know an amazing amazing experience for me to become a better person. And through becoming a better person, um, strengthen the relationships with people that I had before um, that could be strengthened and have severed the relationships with people that I had before that, you know, couldn't be strengthened and, and you know, had to be severed. So um, it's, it's cleansed me. It's cleansed my circle of friends. It's, it's cleansed my mind, my heart. Um, you know, it made me a new person. Oh, oh, oh.